Praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning. Welcome to the Finest of the Week Community Church. We are happy and excited that you have decided to connect with us and join us in our morning worship service. We know that God has something good for you on today, and we're glad about it. Before our service begins, could you do something? Whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, could you like, comment, share, and subscribe? Let us know you're listening so that we can connect with you. If you would like to give to this ministry, we have three convenient ways for you to give. There is Cash App. Type in dollar sign TFWCC. There's also Givelify. In the search box, just type in the Finest of the Week Community Church. If those aren't available to you, please visit us at our website at www.tfwcc.org. Click on Give and just follow the instructions. Now it's time for church to begin. Grab yourself a cold drink, something to eat, grab your Bible, and let's join in the service. And remember, at the finest of the wheat, there's always a place for you here. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Come on now. Come on, clap your hands. Let's go. Oh, yeah. 
Help me to relinquish everything that belongs to me to you, God, that you would use it for your glory, Lord. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing, Lord God, permeate the atmosphere, every room, oh God, every place, Lord God, that those that are watching, oh God, or sitting or standing or driving or in the hospital, wherever they are, God, let your anointing flow, oh God, and do what is needed in that situation. And Lord, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be going to, amen, the book of Titus, chapter number 2, verse number 13. Also going to be going to the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, verse number 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse number 5, 15, excuse me. And the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse number 20. Amen. I will read it in your hearing. Titus 2.13 said, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Revelation 20, verse number 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Psalm 17, verse number 15 says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. And amen. Revelation chapter number 22, verse number 20 says, He which testified these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. When we're thinking about the word blessed, the word blessed in the Greek is makari, makari, makarias. And it means supremely blessed. It means fortunate. It means well off. It means to be envied. Amen. In other words, everybody wants to be you. It means to be happy. The word hope is a Greek word, el peace. And it means expectation or trust, confidence. It's the confident expectation of eternal life with Jesus Christ. For a subject today actually is a phrase, amen, the thought is blessed hope. And for a theme, I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor or look at the mirror, amen, if you will, and ask, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And if I would entitle this, it would be looking for that blessed hope, amen. Someone said to me, and I apologize because I don't remember who said it or I heard it said, and the thought was, amen, that mankind was once identified or defined by their relationship to God. But after the fall of man, after sin came in, they said that now that they are defined or identified at, with, as being, as, excuse me, identified by those things that they possess. Amen. When we even think about the Forbes rich list, and I was looking at it on the other day, and it lists the basic 22, even more, of the billionaires. And on the list, it started off with Jeff Bezos, and then Bill Gates, and then the Arnott's family, then Mark Zuckerberg, and then also Warren Buffett, to just to name a few. Amen. They, when you think about those names, you think about billionaire. Amen. It tends to identify them because of what they possess as far as money is concerned. However, when you look in the word of God and look at the book of Job, the Bible talks about Job's substance. It talks about his camels and his sheep and his oxen and his asses and the fact that he had a great house. Amen. He was called the greatest man of the East. We also look at Solomon. Solomon is not just known for his wisdom, but he's also known for his riches. We find that Solomon would be the richest one, according to the Queen of Sheba, a man that half had never been told. But we find Solomon writing in the book of Ecclesiastes, 
He said that all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. He ends the books actually by saying that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. When we look even in the book of Luke concerning that, Luke chapter number, chapter number 12 verse number 15 says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. He went on to express a parable of a man that had laid his ground and his ground brought forth plenty fruit. And the Bible says it became a, an issue for him because he began to understand that he didn't have enough storage place for his fruit. So he began to say that I'm going to tear down the barns that I have and I'm going to build bigger barns so I can store all of my goods that I have uh, profited or have gained in my barns. And the Bible says he began to talk to himself and tell himself, Amen. The soul, take, e take your ease. Be at comfort. For you have enough to last you many years. And we find the Lord beginning to answer the man. He says, Amen. He says, Thou fool, this night, thy soul, that's thy soul, excuse me, shall be required of thee. And then he says, Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Amen. So he said, So it is that he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 6, verse number 7, he says, Perverse disputing of men and of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So he's saying that these people with corrupt mind are assuming, amen, that, 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 that gain or buying things or having things or having money, amen, is a sign of holiness and respect to God. The Bible says in verse number six, but holiness with contentment is great gain. In other words, having the respect for God and the holiness that he requires with a content, satisfied mind, amen, is a great acquisition. We brought nothing into this world, the Bible goes on to say, and it is certain that we can take nothing out. There was an actor, um, and his, mind is his name is me right now, but I heard him say something very profound. He said that he's never seen a U-Haul attached to a back of a hearse. Amen. Basically saying you cannot take it with you. In verse number 8, a man of 1 Timothy says, And having food and raiment, raiment he, led, he said, Let us be there with content. He goes on to talk about the rich. He said, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. He says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. He said, Which while some covet of after, after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many, many sorrows. Excuse me. And so he's talking about not just people that are not those that are not that don't, that know, don't know God, but he's talking about those that are in the faith. He's saying how riches can cause them to err. He says, "But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness." He said, "Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, wherewith you are called and possess. Profess, excuse me." A good profession among many witnesses. Job says, amen, after he has lost everything, what looks like a period of a day. Bad news one after the other. The Bible lets us know that he says, uh, um, excuse me, the Bible lets us know that he rent his mantle and he shaved his head and fell down the ground and began to worship God. And began to say, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. He said, The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. But then he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He understood, amen, that the things that he had, amen, did not compare, amen, to God who had provided everything for him. The book of Romans, chapter number 14, verse number 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are humans that always live in expectation. 
We are continuously looking for something in one aspect or another. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says all things are full of labor. He says man cannot utter it. He said the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Ecclesiastes chapter number 6 verse number 7 says all the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. Proverbs chapter number 27 verse 20 says hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. He says in Proverbs chapter number 30, he says, There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things that say it's not enough. The grave, a barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that says not, it is enough. Some of us are looking for all types of things in this life. Some of us are looking to get married. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a wonderful thing. Some of us are looking to have children. And that's a wonderful thing. The Bible says the children are a blessing. Some of us are looking for houses and land. And looking to further our education or own our own business. And these desires are all good desires. They're not bad desires. It's just on the way that we prioritize those things that we desire. Amen. We should have that mentality that if the Lord tarries, basically, then I will get married. If the Lord tarries, amen, I will have children. Basically, our mentality has to be what the Bible has said in the book of Matthew, where he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Unto you. I propose to you today that this is a good time to take our time to examine ourselves, to ascertain the answer to the question simply, are you looking for that blessed hope? I would like to establish three points, amen. First of all being, there is a process. Second of all being, we must have the mind of Christ. And then thirdly, looking for that blessed hope. There's a process and it has already started. If you have been born again, meaning you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost till you heard yourself speak in another tongue or another language, amen, as the Spirit of God gave utterance, amen, the, the, the process has already started with you. Have, if you have not had the born-again experience, it's a good day, amen, to start with that. The Bible lets us know because we've already done that, it says, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Verse number two says, behold now, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The next scripture is what I was trying to get to. It says, and every man that had this hope, this expectation in him, purified himself even as he is pure. In other words, he that has that expectation is cleansing himself from all defilement. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 7 verse number 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. That word perfecting means fulfilling it completely. Amen. The word fulfilling what? The holiness. The moral purity. The book of 1 Peter chapter number 1 verse 15 says, but as he is, but as he has called you, is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The Bible helps us to understand even Jesus himself. Amen. In the book of 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse number 1. It says, for then as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. He said, arm yourself likewise, for he that is suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. In other words, it's trying to, us to help us to understand that there's going to be a process that we have to go through. There's a process or processing in holiness that all of us have to attain to, to be able to go back to be with the Lord. We have to understand that suffering molds and it makes us, it shapes us, it forms us. No, it does not feel good. But the Bible says, but for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, it worketh for us. Amen. It's in our employ a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Second of all, we must have the mind of Christ. 
In Philippians chapter number two, verse number five, it said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Amen. Got to have the mind of Christ. Then it said, he took upon himself the form of a servant. Then it says, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death of the cross. Another thing that he did here in the book of uh, Philippians, it says, and he that sent me is with me. Even with the mind of Christ understanding, we have to humble ourselves and, and not look for fame and fortune, but look for the glory to be given to God. Amen. Becoming a servant. Amen. And, and, and being a servant unto death. But also understanding that God has not left you by yourself. Amen. God is with you. Amen. He said, Lord, I'm with you even until the ends of the world. And then he says in the last, uh, in verse number um, seven, the last uh, uh, sentence, he says, for I do always those things that please him. We have to have the mind of Christ. We have to be those ones that seek to please God. We have to be those ones that cannot be men pleasers. But our initial and our total uh, desire has to be that God would say, well done. In the book of Matthews, it says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. In the book of Acts, it talks about how Jesus went about doing good. Amen. It's our job, amen, having the mind of Christ to go about to try to alleviate Amen. As much of the suffering as we can, as God would allow us to do, because he's given us the ability to do that. In the book of Mark, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. So we have a job to do, but tell somebody we are well equipped to do it. Amen. In the book of Luke, he talks about from the cross. He begins to say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. To have the mind of Christ, you have to have a forgiving heart. We cannot hold people hostage in unforgiveness. Did they hurt you? Yes. Did they offend you? Yes. Amen. But we have offended God. Amen. We have hurt God, if we can say it like that. Amen. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. We have done things contrary to his law. Amen. He has suffered and died for us, and then we still have gone astray. Amen. So we have to have a forgiving heart to have the mind of Christ. And number three, amen, looking for that blessed hope. Looking for that blessed hope and that the glorious appearing of that great Savior, that great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It says, for who gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Amen. Whatsoever you have done, the whole thing. Every violation of the law, every transgression, amen, every wickedness, every sin. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 1, 21, that she shall bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Again, the word blessed, amen, means to be supremely blessed. It means fortunate. It means to be well off. It means to be happy. And that word hope again, el peace, means expectation. Hallelujah. So we have an expectation, amen, that we are not only now, but we'll be supremely blessed. Amen. We find that we are those that have to begin to look for that blessed hope. Amen. We have to look to make sure that we're prepared, amen, when the Lord comes back in the clouds. Amen. He's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. Amen. We're looking for him to crack the clouds. And he's not coming back for us on terra firma, but he's going to meet us in the air. The Bible says when the trump sounds that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him with the, to meet, to meet the Lord, to be with him forevermore. We understand that we're not the only ones that have looked for Jesus. The Bible or for God. The Bible says that Abraham looked for God. The Bible says um, in, in Hebrews 11, chapter number, number 8, excuse me, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, and they obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. He said, by faith he should join in the land of promise, and as, in a, as a stranger in the country. 
It says, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. It says, for he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham left his family going out looking, amen, and expecting, amen, something from God. We find he came to the conclusion he was looking for a city, not just Canaan, amen, who had a foundation, but the builder and maker was God. The Bible says about the heroes of faith in the book of chapter 11, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. He said, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. He said, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from which they had came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. They said, but now they desire a better country, that is, in heaven. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. Hallelujah. They did not receive the promise. Hallelujah. But they died in faith. Uh, we have to know that God is faithful. Wow. God cannot lie. Hallelujah. Yeah. If he said it was going to happen, it is going to come to pass. Uh, they were looking for a home. Uh, they understood that their home was not here on earth. Uh, hallelujah. But they died with that hope in their hearts. Uh, but we understand, amen, in the New Testament, uh, we have an even better understanding. Uh, because when Jesus was on the earth, uh, before he left, he began to tell them in the book of St. John. Uh, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. Now, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Wow. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Wow. It's the same prepared place wow. that they were talking about, the heroes of faith. Wow. They were looking for a city. Wow. We're looking for a city. It's called New Jerusalem. Wow. Job looked, hallelujah, himself. Wow. The Bible says he began to say in all of his problems and troubles. Uh, he began to say, if a man die, uh, shall he live again? Now, uh, he said, all of my appointed time, uh, will I wait till my change come? Uh, Brother Paul picked it up, hallelujah, in Corinthians. Uh, he began to say, uh, although he was persecuted, uh, although he went through all types of trouble, uh, although they tried to kill him continuously, uh, the Bible says, uh, for we know uh, if this earthly house uh, of this tabernacle uh, were dissolved, uh, we have a building uh, of God, uh, a house not made uh, with hands, uh, eternal in the heaven. Uh, he said, for in this we groan uh, earnestly, uh, desiring to be clothed upon uh, with our house, uh, which is from heaven. Uh, he said, 
again, who gave himself for us that we might be saved. Revelation 20 uses the same word, blessed. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. He said, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. It shall reign with him a thousand years. I love the fact that it talks about blessed holy are they that have part in the first resurrection. The first res re resurrection, which includes us. Amen. We're going to reign with him a thousand years. But Revelation said that everybody that's dead won't raise at that time. But only those of us that make it out of here, whether we're alive or dead, to go back with him in the rapture or the catching away or the gathering of the church. The first resurrection will be here in the thousand years before he wakes up all the rest of mankind. And then ultimately, amen, wake them up for the white throne judgment. Amen. But the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter number 22 as I close. It says, he which testified these things, surely I come quickly. And then it says, amen. And then it finishes with saying, even so, come, Lord Jesus. We are looking for that blessed hope. We are looking for the Lord of glory to return to us. I know it's rough right now. And if you focus on the things that are happening, it will cause you to be discouraged. It will cause you to be frustrated. It will cause you, if you're not careful, to lose hope. But it also causes you to stop looking for the blessed hope. Our hope is not eye level or down toward the ground. But our hope is in looking up. The Bible has says that when you see all these things happening, and they shall come to pass, they must come to pass. He said, look up for your salvation draweth nigh. We don't know when the Lord is coming back, but we do know he's coming back. And he's a blessed hope. As human beings, we try to satisfy ourselves. But just like Solomon came to the conclusion that it's all vanity and vexation of the spirit. We're never going to be satisfied with getting and having but when the Lord comes back, when we awaken his likeness, whether from the dead or change, these bodies are changed to meet him in the air. At that point, we will be satisfied. Satisfied means being totally complete, satiated, having no needs, no wants. Because when he takes us out of here, we want to be with him throughout eternity. And then the Bible talks about the book of Revelation about that holy city that's going to descend out of heaven from God. It talks about the foundations and how it's constructed. It talks about the, the gates and how they're constructed. It talks about the measurements of the city. But it also talks about that God will be there. The Bible says, we read it up, we already stated it. It said, beloved, now we're the sons of God. And it does not yet appear we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. He's going to take us to a city, amen, that is made by him. He's going to take us to a city where there will be no more crying, no more dying, no more suffering. The Bible says he will wipe away our tears himself. We're getting ready to go to a place, amen, but we want to worry about any kind of diseases. No liars, no murderers, no nothing. We're going to be with Christ. Amen. It'll be the culmination of what he has created the heavens and the earth for. From the very beginning of making the earth, his desire was that we might dwell with him. Amen. And he already had plans when we failed, because he knew we would, to bring us back to him. Even to the point where he, the Bible said that from the foundation of the earth, in the book of Revelation, a lamb was slain. He already had things in mind for us. He's already going to prepare a place for us. Amen. Ask your neighbor, what are you looking for? What is your focal point? What is your most concern? Thank you, Lord. It really has to be that blessed hope. 
He's coming back for us. Don't know when, don't know where. But our job is to make sure that we're ready to go through the process, to have the mind of Christ. There's many other things, but amen. We don't have a lot of time. But we have to be ready for the Lord when he comes back. Tell somebody, I'm looking for that blessed hope. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We magnify you because you're God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because only you, Lord, hallelujah, can do what needs to be done. Strengthen my brother and my sisters, Lord. Turn our hearts back to you, Lord. Save somebody. Let somebody come and ask, what must I do to be saved? Oh, God, let everyone that has gone away from you, that have backslidden, let them come back, Lord. Let them know that you're standing with outstretched arms to receive them. Lord, strengthen my brother and my sisters, Lord, more than you strengthen and blessing me. Lord, cause us, oh God, to continue to look up. Cause us, oh God, to be those that will praise you and give you what's in your name. Cause us, oh God, that will live in a state where your joy continuously remains in us and bubbles up over and out, Lord, even unto those that are sad, oh God, that their mindset will be changed. Bless us, God, in the name of Jesus, to do your will, to do your work. Hallelujah. To understand that you are in control of our lives. Lord, you said they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Help us to be led by you, God. Help us to walk with you, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to do your will and to please you, God. And Lord, we bless you right now, Lord. Strengthen right now those that have hung down heads and feeble knees. Strengthen and encourage those, Lord God, that are frustrated and hurting. Strengthen and encourage those, oh God, who have lack, oh God. And bless them, Lord. You say, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Lord, bless right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Do all that you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also, we want to extend an altar call. Amen. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and have not been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, there's a number right here. Please give us a call and we will meet you right here. Amen. So you may be baptized. If you have questions, still call us. Amen. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Amen. Concerning your salvation. Amen. We want you to understand and we know that we're praying for you and that we love you. Amen. If we can do something for you, let us know. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. May he wrap his arm all around you. Amen. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Have an amazing, magnificent day in Jesus. Looking for that blessed hope.